Halo semuanya, berjumpa lagi bersama aku di sini, analis gaming di sini di video Waltroku, yaitu Waltro Metro Exodus di bagian kedua. Tapi sebelum mulai, kalian bisa like video ini jika kalian menyukainya. Lalu jangan lupa untuk share kepada menyukai dan subscribe jika kalian melihat video seperti ini lagi. Oh ya, jangan lupa juga untuk klik link di deskripsi dan komentar yaitu link ke kopi dan traktir untuk memberikan dukungan kepada channel ini. Ini Kopi Streaming dan tanpa menunda lagi, mari kita mulai video Waltronya. We stopped a hundred clicks from Moscow to check our Geiger counters. The thing is, they are all in the green, as if they're in a conspiracy. Still, this amazing piece of news doesn't really impress anyone that much. The guys are all confused as to what to do next. And I, I'm just waiting for answers. And hoping the commander, whom until recently I trusted implicitly, is going to be extremely persuasive in his reasoning. Di sini Arthur yang menjelaskan situasinya sekarang setelah ia melarikan diri dari Hansa. Sekarang ia berada di luar Moskow, tapi tidak ada tanda-tanda radiasi di counter mereka yang mana tak mengejutkan. Tapi anggota lain punya masalah lain. Mereka bingung harus ngapain nantinya. Sementara itu Arthur menunggu jawaban dari Miller. Jawaban yang akan segera kita dapatkan. Ya bahkan idiot juga bilang bahwa yang lain bingung ngapain berikutnya. Sementara itu Hana masuk dari luar kayaknya dia. Hmm, counternya hijau, berarti gak ada radiasi. Berarti kita bisa bernapas di sini tanpa masker. Mereka? Why would they shoot at you, the orders commander? Explain something at least, you owe us that! Well, I might as well drop the bomb now. The war did not end. What do you uh, mean, what? did not end? Let me finish. Most of our cities are destroyed. The rest of the country is probably under enemy occupation. To avoid new nuclear attacks against us, command chose the only viable course of action. To play dead. To ensure radio silence, the shield system was created. A network of radio jammers covering Moscow and suburbs. So that some radio enthusiasts wouldn't bring more bombs down on our heads by whining on air. And it's one of these jammers that got disabled by the hands of those present here. Oh, ya Tuhan. Jadi begitu ya. Kata Miller, kita masih dalam peperangan dan kebanyakan kota sudah hancur atau diambil alih oleh musuh. Musuh yang dimaksud sini bisa aja negara lain atau enggak Amerika. Lalu kenapa Miller tidak mengatakan ini? Karena dia baru saja dikasih tahu setelah pertarungan di Six. Untuk mencegah musuh meluncurkan misil, Komando memutuskan untuk pura-pura mati, yaitu dengan masang jammer, sehingga tidak ada sinyal dari luar yang masuk. Begitu pula mencegah radio dari Moskow keluar. Kata Miller aku harus ngecek radio dan transmisi dari The Ark. Who even needs a trial when the case is so clear? There's no way back now. Which means we have to continue moving forward. Command, what are you talking about? The Moscow Defense Command. Have you ever heard of the Invisible Watchers? I have, but they're just an urban legend. Not at all. They are command. Are you sure they care for more than just protecting their asses? You mentioned the Ark. What's that all about? Hmm. Jadi itulah alasan mengapa Hansa mau kita mati karena kita telah menghancurkan Jammer dan membunuh tentara mereka. Setidaknya aku berusaha semampu untuk mencegah korban jiwa dengan stealth. Eh, uh, kembali ke topik. Rupanya Moskow dikendalikan oleh Invisible Watcher. Invisible Watcher adalah legenda atau tahayul di Metro mengenai dewa yang mengawasi kehidupan Metro dan mereka tinggal di Metro 2. Sebenarnya, Invisible Watcher adalah komando, yaitu mereka dari pemerintah Rusia yang selamat setelah perangan. Oh, 
Found it yet? There's a whole world out here! A world where we could live! So far, we only know one thing for sure. Radiation levels are nominal. The air is breathable. But what about the rain? So what? You can't even breathe in Moscow. So? Does anybody live out here? We don't know. Kalau dipikir, Mila ada benarnya. Ya, kita bisa bernapas tanpa masker di sini. Tidak perlu khawatir akan radiasi. Tapi, bagaimana dengan orang-orang yang selamat atau yang tinggal di luar? Akankah mereka memperlakukan kita dengan yang baik? But we do know we've been lied to. For 20 years we've been lied to. We know they've been killing people. Collateral damage is inevitable in operations of such scale and secrecy. Yes, people have died. But the bombs killed tens of millions. Yet we are alive. We stayed alive throughout those years. Artyom almost got killed. Is he just collateral damage too? Guess what? Yes! If you have to choose between the life of a single man, no matter how dear he is to you, and the lives of everybody else, all the dwellers of Metro, then there's nothing to think about. Di satu sisi, aku paham mengapa Miller begitu. Dia adalah tentara. Dia sudah mengabdikan dirinya untuk negaranya dalam waktu yang lama, ditambah ia juga komandan. Dalam peperangan atau operasi yang namanya korban jiwa tak dapat dihindari. Bagi Miller, jika ia harus mengorbankan sejumlah nyawa untuk menyelamatkan semua nyawa di metro, dia akan ragu. Dia bahkan gak akan ragu untuk mengorbankan nyawanya sendiri jika semua metro selamat. How will things finish for all of us if we start out lying to each other and arguing? We need to be better. You ask me how things will finish. Well, let me tell you, it all depends on Artyom now. If he finds the frequency, if they are alive. <sighs> Found it yet, Artyom? Please try. It must be there. Aku rasa itu semua pembicaraan ya. Baiklah. Mari kita cari transmisinya. Dan kalau dipikir lagi, aku yakin pertempuran di Six juga memengaruhi sikap Miller. Banyak Sparta yang tewas dalam pertempuran itu. Ditambah ia juga kehilangan kakinya. Terlalu banyak nyawa yang hilang. Terlalu banyak pengorbanan untuk ragu sekarang. Well, aku rasa ini adalah pelajaran untuk kita saling terbuka dan tidak berbohong satu sama lain. Ah, aku rasa aku mendapatkan transmisinya. Ini hijau ini. Berarti ini transmisinya. Hmm, jadi itu adalah proyek di Ark ya. Proyek Ark adalah proyek kota di bawah gunung yang mantau. Tempat ini menampung pemerintahan dunia, orang-orang yang selamat, dan juga menampung tempat penyimpanan dan juga para ahli yang mana cukup untuk membangun negara kembali setelah post-apocalypse. Jadi kita akan pergi ke sana dan memberitahu bahwa Moskow masih hidup. Oleh karena itu, Miller dan yang lain sangat senang dengan kabar ini. You think I'm deaf or what? Ah, that. Just a moment. I thought my ears were deceiving me. 
It's not a short trip to the Urals, so we should make ourselves comfortable, I guess. Let's name this bucket of bolts at the very least, eh? It's about time! Let's go around and be done with you. <laughs> nah, go to hell! <laughs> Even better! Oh, come How on! How about Aurora? The Roman goddess of dawn and a cruiser of, uh, uh, you know what? That's better. <laughs> Not bad. I like it. Ah, beautiful name! Sounds okay, but the cruiser of what? Yeah, I'll tell you later. Looks like it's decided. <laughs> Let's trick to the Hey, Artyom, let's take a look at that map. All right, we had a round. That should be enough. Yurimak, full steam ahead. Hi. Full oh, steam ahead. Oh, wow, that that's air, some distance. I wonder how long it will take. Baik, jadi sekarang aku bisa melihat petanya dan melanjutkan ke level berikutnya. Tapi aku mau lihat-lihat di sini dulu. I was expecting an arrow from a cupid, but I got a bullet from an ugly motherfucker instead. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're okay? Because I know you. Just so you know, scars attract the ladies. And there's definitely a lot of those up ahead. I don't need a lot, really. It's quality that matters. Hmm. Jika ada sesuatu yang harus aku puji dengan para Sparta ini, yaitu mereka semua setia kawan, dan aku harus lakukan semampuku agar mereka selamat dan tidak terluka. Andrei Ivanovich, how long have you been working with those jammer people for? About a year, I guess. At first, they got me to sign up by singing of my experience helping people. Told me about weather stations and muted migration observers. I was proud to be helping those. Then, about two months ago, they loaded a bunch of people onto my Aurora. The guards took them outside and came back alone. Told me they took the people to a nearby station, but I knew it had caved in years ago. A few days later, I was coming back from a run, stopped the train, went and found those people. Soon they understood I saw that ravine. Fed me the usual lies about the spies and whatnot. Did you believe them? Well, it sure seems safer to believe. But then, I just couldn't keep the charade up. Then the security officer told me straight. Whoever you speak to, dies. The whole station dies with him if need be. So, that's how it went. But when I saw you, and then Artyom, I knew I wasn't alone anymore. You can't just keep these things in. Hmm. Jadi itulah mengapa Yarm aku menolong kita. Dia sudah tahu sejak lama yang Hansa lakukan. Dia sudah muak. Itulah mengapa ketika ia melihat Artyom dan Anna, ia langsung segera menolong. Yes. Have you ever taken a train beyond city borders? No. I didn't get a chance to go. I used to be a metro train engineer. I worked on the ring line. Ha! Huh, what a bore that was. Going round and round all day, round and round. And no real distance either. It used to take less than 30 minutes to make the lap. So I kept dreaming about how good it would be to just leave the metro and work on a real railroad. And travel around Russia. Not to run in circles like a, like a rat in a maze. Huh? My wife wouldn't let me. We had kids, too. When I'd start going on about the railroad, uh, about my dream, <laughs> she'd stop sleeping with me for months in protest. <laughs> uh, yes. But when Moscow got hit by Tatiana and little Sashenka were at home. I was working that day. Irishka was waiting for me in the metro, returning from cram school. So we survived together that day. But in the end, I lost her too. TP. Ah, 
you know how it goes. So, I'm driving here and talking to Tatiana in my head. See, I say, you couldn't stop me for good after all. Here I am, on the real railroad. A real engineer, Tanyusha. I'm sorry I got so emotional there. Hmm, oh, Irma punya kehidupan yang sedih. Tak hanya kehilangan istri dan anaknya, dia juga kehilangan anaknya lagi oleh TB. Itu adalah hal yang tak boleh terjadi kepada orang tua sih, kehilangan anaknya. Hmm, dan Anna minta aku untuk keluar untuk menghirup udara. Well, soal Jermak, dia selalu ingin melakukan perjalanan, dan aku rasa dia bisa wujudkan itu sekarang. Perjalanan kita akan panjang. Benar minta aku untuk bicara. Sebentar, aku mau cari musik untuk Alios ya. Hmm, bukan. Wait, apa ini? Pembicaraan Hanza, jadi mereka memasang jebakan di rel kereta. Itu artinya kita memang tidak bisa kembali. Hmm. Jadi sekarang mereka berpikir bahwa Miller adalah mata-mata. Tak cuma Miller, tapi juga seluruh kru di sini adalah mata-mata bagi mereka. Itu artinya kita tidak bisa kembali. Kalau kita kembali, kita akan langsung ditembak di tempat. Ditambah kita tidak bisa yakinkan penduduk metro gitu aja. Mereka pasti berpikir kita adalah pembohong. Mereka membicarakan akan menyergap musuh. Jadi itulah bagaimana cara mereka membunuh orang-orang yang datang dari luar. Hmm, ini transmisi tadi. Bukan. Mari kita cek dulu. Apakah masih ada transmisi lainnya? Atau pembicaraan? Oke, okay, itu cukup suram. Tadilah radio di mana orang meminta bantuan. 
Tapi sayangnya kita tidak bisa lakukan apa-apa. Pertama, kita tidak tahu dia di mana. Kedua, dia bisa aja jauh di sini. Jadi kita tidak punya waktu untuk menyelamatkannya. Yang membuatnya mengerikan adalah kita mendengar mutan masuk ke tempatnya dan mendengar mutan makan anak itu. Oke, kelihatan dia ngecek peralatan. Yes. It seems to me whether it was intended or not that our gunner now has a goal to strive for because of you. We all remember the way you fought back in D6. So no matter what lies ahead, we're with you. You can count on us. Yeah. Yes. As for me, I'm running a little inventory check. Yeah. It is kind of cramped in here. I'm thinking of making something of a workbench. So that's all the instruments we get, and everything else would be within arm's reach. With no workbench, you just lose small components. We'll use this place to work on the weapons, cleaning, oiling, keep out of everybody's way, and keep them from messing with my stuff. Oh, well, we'll have to take turns, of course, but we'll manage. So, if you find any weapons you'd like to keep, I'll store them for you here on the Aurora, and you can come back to exchange them. You'll get them back in their best shape ever, don't you doubt. Ah, boy, have I cleaned and oiled a lot of weapons in my life. Hmm, factory, and homemade too. Some of those were just amazing, so unusual. So, if you have any weapon-related questions, I'm your man. And weapons, they are like girls. They need attention. You clean your weapon well, you oil it, you check the ammo. Because these dirty ammo caps do get rusty sometimes. But if you put your heart into it, the weapon never fails. Ah, well... I'll just finish oiling this one, then start on another. Namanya adalah Tokarev. Dia yang bertanggung jawab mengurus peralatan dan persenjataan di sini. Barusan dia mengatakan padaku, betapa pentingnya mengurus senjatamu. Perlakukannya seperti wanita. Oke, Duk, aku akan gantikan kamu sebentar. Aku rasa ini utang budi atas kamu menyelamatkanku tadi. That philosopher doesn't come here to meditate too often, though. That's all? Okay, I'll take it from here. <laughs> aku bilang sebentar, kan? Baiklah, aku sudah selesai di bawah. Juga sudah ini nyari musik yang bagus buat Alios, ya. Berarti... Oh ya, Miller tadi mau bicara denganku, kan? What's done is done. Yes, I didn't stop you from going outside. Yes, I tried to talk you out of it. Yes, I didn't tell you you're not the only ones to survive. But even I didn't have the clearance. Not back then. This is a state secret, do you understand? I've been granted clearance only after our fight to protect the D6. They said they needed me to teach their recruits because the war was still on. Don't you think I was shocked? What did our people in D6 die for? What did I lose my legs for? But I understood. Because the war was still on. Security was paramount. Our people would have understood. So please, do the same. You would have spilled the beans to everyone in Metro. You're a goddamn Prometheus, a messiah. You must lead the people out of the caves. Do you think you would have saved anyone? Remember that jammer? What if Moscow has been found out because of you? What if there are missiles inbound? Anyways, no matter what they think of me, I'm no deserter and will never become one. I'm ready to bear full responsibility for everything. 
But if there is even the smallest chance to earn my pardon, I will take it. Which means that we, like a runner that tripped, need to keep running ever faster just to keep balance. And don't dare you trip us all over again. Am I understood? I hope I am. Anyway, at least now we know where to run. So, go back inside and take a look at the map. Our route is pretty obvious now. Miller cuma mau Artyom paham situasinya. Bagaimana jika ketika Artyom menghancurkan Jemar, Mesir meluncur ke Moskow. Dan juga sebelumnya, Miller nggak tahu bahwa dunia luar masih ada. Dia baru tahu setelah pertempuran di Six, dan dia juga diancam kalau buka mulut. Dan duganku benar, rupanya pertempuran di Six mempengaruhi Miller. Banyak korban jiwa dalam pertempuran itu, dan Miller nggak mau pengorbanan mereka sia-sia. Oleh karena itu, ia minta Artyom untuk paham. Look, if there's no radiation, that means we could bring everyone out of Moscow. It doesn't matter if there's radiation or not, Comrade American. The citizens of Moscow will have to stay put. But why? We're just a short way from the city. And the radiation's gone. Things might have been that easy in your America, but life has never been so easy here. Even now, we woke up saviors of the metro, and by lunchtime, we're enemy spies, saboteurs, tra train thieves, and what for? Something we thought was true turned out to be a lie, and that is enough for them to want us dead. The Hansa bosses must have known that we could live up here, but the public didn't know that. Who'd want to stay down in the metro if we told them? We cannot tell them. If they are ready to make men's meat out of old ladies and kids to keep their secret, what do you think would they do to you, Uncle Sam? Huh? We can't go back. We can't use radio. Remember the jammers? And even if you pull a perfect rambo and break through back into the metro, do you expect they'd all just believe you and go, Yes, Moses, lead us out of this Egypt? Can you even imagine the death toll? Take your average station dwellers. Even if the Hansa guards didn't shoot them, how far would they get? Right to the nearest mutant den, most likely. We are safe here, speeding along on this Eastern Express. They are not as lucky. Not at all. Well, what if there was a proper evacuation? <laughs> and who would do that? Hansa's people? The ones that kept us under lock and key for 20 years? Or, or us too? Besides, getting the people out of Moscow is not the end of it. You have to settle them somewhere, provide food. No, brother. I do get where you're coming from, but this matter is way more complex than it seems. Idiot. Walau namanya begitu, dia adalah orang yang sangat pintar, orang terpintar di anggota. Jadi kenapa? Kenapa kita nggak kasih tahu semua orang di metro dan lakukan evakuasi? Ya, karena itu nggak mudah. Pertama, nggak mungkin penduduk metro percaya aja. Ingat, kita sudah dicap sebagai pengkhianat. Kedua juga ada Hanza. Kalau kita bertempur dengan mereka, kita kalah jumlah. Dan dari percakapan di radio, nggak mungkin mereka membiarkan kita balik aja. Lalu juga ada anggota Sparta di metro. Aku yakin mereka juga berpikir kita adalah pengkhianat. Ketiga, jika melakukan evakuasi, kita harus tahu kemana tujuan kita dan harus mengurus persediaan. Ya, idiot mengetahui garis besar dalam segala hal. Hey Demir, I've been thinking, how far are we gonna go? No masks needed. The railroad runs through the whole country. <laughs> as far as we want, I reckon. As for Yamantau, it's about 2,000 clicks away. Now, I, I mean, how far can we get with the fuel we have? What's this machine's mileage? Aha, that. Uh, yeah, it certainly is a coal guzzler, this thing. Uh, then again, there should be coal stores at every station. And if we don't find any, we could still burn firewood. Why the long face, Demir? <laughs> you see, I made a mistake of stocking up on filters. While I could have gotten a whole bunch of MREs for the same ammo, or, or a new hazard suit, I wish I'd known there'd be no need for them. 
The corporal sold them way too hard, that bastard. <laughs> Get them while they last. He even gave me a book as a free extra. Quotations from Charman Mao. Uh, the, 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 do you know this writer? Uh, Mao? Anyway, here I am like a fool with the stupid book and the filters. While well, we could really use that Milgrade ammo now. <laughs> you, you never know who or what we might meet. That is so. You're not giving the book enough credit. At the very least, it contains a whole world of wisdom on fighting the war against the imperialism. Which we might encounter on the way, even though so far we just seem to be fighting our own. Yeah, Anna's pulling no punches this time. Perhaps she shouldn't have. It, it's not like the Colonel understands everything. Mm, Who is in the right here? Uh, whoever's not wrong, obviously. Well, who's not wrong, then? He who does nothing, and says nothing, too. Give me a break. Who's in the right now? Everybody is, brother. And nobody. Uh, I shouldn't have asked. I am not bothered when I'm not understood. I am bothered when I don't understand. So, dear Moses, can you feel how sweet the air is without a mask? Or not just sweet, so many shades of taste it has. A weird feeling, eh, my friend? I remember you telling me how you took your mask off atop a stonkin' otar. When you honed those missiles in on the dark ones. Was the air bitter then? Who knows, though? Had you not launched those missiles, you'd probably never have climbed that building or received that signal. Life is weird, huh? One random event drags another with it, like links in a chain. And you are pulling that chain out of a deep, dark well. The links emerge from the dark water. And what drink is in that bucket that's on the end of the chain? That's a mystery. That's what I often think about when facing a choice. You can't drop the chain either. You always have to drink from that bucket. Well. Bottoms up, I suppose. So, how does it feel to be the Moses who yanked on this particular chain? <laughs> Is it dumb to think about such things when all I ever did in life was carry out orders? Well, I'm not called idiot for nothing. Still, I would like to know what's on the end of your chain. Hmm, jadi ini membicarakan mengenai konsekuensi dan apa yang menungguku di akhir ya. Aku akan pastikan yang menungguku di akhir adalah hasil yang terbaik. Oleh karena itu, aku akan hati-hati dan bersabar. Lagi pula, aku sudah berpengalaman mendapatkan good ending di game Metro seperti yang kalian lihat di Waltrogo sebelumnya. Another 40 years or so, and you'd go completely native. Isn't it confusing now, though? If your California is still around, you became a Russian for nothing. By the way, if we meet the occupying forces, whose side will you be on, Sam? Ours or theirs? Not funny. But if the war is still not over, does that make us enemies? Nah, that's not what I meant. The colonel told me to stop smoking shroom, but uh, isn't a pipe of peace an exception? Eh? <laughs> I wish we could smoke one in California, my man. That would be so much fun. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Hey, do you miss home? I don't know. Really, I got used to it. And now I learned my folks might be alive, and I'm in a daze. I see. What I meant was, even though you're an American, you're our man! I'm a Spartan, Alyosha. Now and forever. You're a Spartan, too. This is what we are now. <laughs> I wonder what they'd think of me at this Supreme HQ, though. Ah, drop it! 
We'll all stand with you, like with Anna and Artyom, like when the Colonel protected you from that crowd. Yeah, there were women and old guys and kids. They all wanted it. I didn't even want to resist, even though I was younger and stronger back then. Sam, the war was really on back then. Your missiles had only just fallen on us, just like ours on your home. So forget that shit about the HQ. You're a Spartan, one of us. That's it. Thank you, Colonel. Sir. So, we're going to the Urals. I'd love to see San Diego, though. Even in a dream. There's this... Uh, little whorehouse on its red door above our station I'd like to see. Even if it was just in the dream. Look, I'll catch some shut eye if you don't mind. <laughs> of course. Get some sleep. Yeah. Besides, uh, in a dream, it's definitely cheaper. Hmm. Jadi Sam adalah orang Amerika. Gak heran logatnya berbeda dengan kru lain. Kelihatannya ia bingung mengenai tempatnya. Apalagi pas tahu bahwa masih ada orang Amerika di luar sana. Aku rasa ini bagus kalau dijadikan story sih. Baiklah semuanya, aku rasa videonya sudah cukup sampai di sini. Jika kalian menyukai video seperti ini, kalian bisa like videonya, share kepada menyukai, dan subscribe jika kalian ingin melihat video seperti ini lagi. Oh ya, jangan lupa juga untuk klik link di deskripsi dan komentar itu link kopi dan traktir untuk memberikan dukungan kepada channel ini. Influence Gaming dan sampai jumpa di video berikutnya. See ya!